Hello, my name is Denislav Petkov. I'm Systems and Applications Engineer from the Simple Switcher Group at Texas Instruments. And today I want to talk to you about the new LM43603 buck converter, EMI, and board layout. Let's go to um, the screen here and talk about buck converter high DIDT loops. The most important thing in uh, switching regulators is looking at the high DIDT loops, identifying where those sit on the board and making those as small as possible. So for a buck converter, the high DIDT loop is formed by the uh, input capacitor, the VIN terminal, the high side uh, switch, the low side switch, and the ground terminal. And keeping this loop as small as possible will make sure that the inductance formed by this loop is also as small as possible. Why is this important? Because higher inductance in the presence of uh, high DIDT equals more noise and that noise is gonna show up as high EMI uh, and also can affect the normal operation of the buck converter. Another topic we should look at is uh, protecting sensitive nodes. The feedback node is a sensitive node and has to be as small as possible. The traces connected to the feedback pin should be short and thin so they don't pick up any noise. It's very often that we see this rule violated. The feedback trace on many boards is long and thick and that is not good because it uh, affects the performance of the regulator and uh, it could also affect the EMI. Shielding is also very important. Here we have a, two boards, two board examples. One it has two layers and the other one has four layers. The component placement is the same. It's the same bomb. Uh, components sit on top. The routing is exactly the same. The only difference is we have two additional shielding layers uh, in between. And from a uh, test can that we did here in our three meter chamber, we can see that adding additional ground layers in the middle can result in um, reduced uh, EMI. In this case, we had five uh, dB difference um, below the uh, CISPR 22 class B line. Let's take a look at the 43603 board layout. We have the board here, but it would be easier to look at the um, layout on the screen. The LM43603 pinout was designed so that you can have a easy layout and EMI, uh, good EMI performance. The whole family of uh, converters has the same uh, pinout, so all the parts are pin-to-pin -pin compatible, so your board layout will be compatible with any part from that family. Now, uh, let's look at the pinout. The, we, we said that the high DIDT loop in a buck converter is formed by the input capacitor, the high side switch, and um, the low side switch ground. So in the 43603, um, the VIN pin and the P ground pins are right next to each other. So that allows you to place the input capacitor as close as possible, making this loop as small as possible, and uh, which decreases the inductance in this high DIDT loop. Another important thing to point out is that switches on the opposite side so that you all you have to do is bring switch out and connect it straight to the inductor. You don't have to send the switch node to other layers because that would um, generate more noise. Also the C boot pin is right next to switch which allows you to place the boot capacitor uh, next to the switch pin make that also hide the IDT loops as small as possible. The feedback node, which is a sensitive node, is all the way down in the corner, uh, right hand side corner, uh, bottom corner, and feedback is close to, uh, right next to a ground, which provides some shielding and also allows you to place the feedback divider very close to the pin, making the feedback node very small. Since all these signals are routed on uh, top layer, we can have unbroken, large unbroken uh, 
shape here uh, on top for which helps for thermal and for also for shielding and we have we can have unbroken bottom ground plane for again for shielding and better thermal performance and now let's go inside our 3 meter EMI chamber and prepare a board for a scan and now we're inside TI's 3 meter chamber this is where we uh, do our preliminary evaluation board testing before we go outside to a 10 meter certified facility. This chamber is lined up with these ferrite tiles uh, to provide the RF insulation. And this is a very typical setup. Uh, we have a 360 degree turntable. The board would sit in the middle here, powered up. And here we have the antenna tower with the antenna attached to it and moving up and down to scan emissions at every height. Uh, let's go and do some testing. All right, let's uh, run a scan. Um, inside the chamber, we have the board powered up and here we have a spectrum analyzer, which is getting data from the antenna inside. And on the screen, we're plotting the results from this scan against the CISPR 22 class B and class A limit lines. And we're almost done here scanning. Uh, as, as you can see, the LM4-3603 is passing class B specification for a 3 meter chamber. And now I'd like to show you the results we got from a 10 meter certified EMI chamber facility. This is for LM4-3603 running with 12 volts input. 3.3 volts out and 3 amps. It is passing class B uh, specification and all of the parts in this family were tested and uh, passed the same class B uh, test. And for more information go to simpleswitcher.com. Thank you for watching.